All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Jill with Go English Coach. Um, today we have grammar, our advanced grammar two class. So we're starting a brand new class here in the month of June. Um, this is class one, and we are going to be talking about um, present perfect tense. In our class eight of our grammar one class, we did um, we started with present perfect and present perfect progressive, and I got so many questions that I think I wanted to just kind of take one little step back and begin just easily without both tenses. We'll just look at present perfect today, and we're going to look at those with um, since and for, and then we're going to practice some of the contractions and then looking at how to form questions. The book I'm using today, I always have to share that with you guys, is this English grammar book, Fundamental in, um, Fundamentals of English Grammar. Um, I really like this book. A lot of my students, um, I actually got this book um, recommended to me by students. Um, so it's a really great book for that. I do not make money on um, any sort of relationship with books. So this is merely just me sharing, you know, where I'm getting ideas for my lessons and um, and kind of just examples because they've done such great work laying everything out for me. So um, let's get started. So the present perfect tense. So one of the great things that I love about this book is they've got these wonderful graphs. Let me see if I can show this to you. So for those of you who are on the live, here you go. Here it is up here for you guys. Um, so basically when we use the, it says when we use the present perfect tense, it's used to express situations that began in the past and continue to today. So that's when we're using this present perfect with, since, and for, okay? So we use present perfect, I've abbreviated that here to have PP, is used with, since, and for. I'm gonna just make those a little different color because I think sometimes it's just hard for you guys to see. So, the present perfect is used with since and for to describe a situation that began in the past and continues to the present. So let's, I like these little charts, okay? Here's now or today, okay? Here's the past and here's the future, okay? So let's see, past. So when we have present perfect that we use with since and for, we are using this to describe or um, to describe something that started in the past and continues today. So started here and continues all the way into today and possibly will continue into the future, right? So let's look at some examples. So we've got two examples here with for and two examples here with since, okay? So here we go. So number one, we have, I have known him for six years. I have known him for six years, okay? Oop, that is not the one I wanted to, I wanted to underline here for, like that and like that. So you guys can see that hopefully a little bit better here. <laughs> um, Great. So when we discuss the things, you know, using for and since, um, we have different kind of circumstances when we can use for and since. So let's look at the, the two examples we have here with since. I have known him since 1995. I have known him since 1995. And we have been friends since 2013, okay? So what do we notice about when we use for and when we use since? Because if you think about it, it's pretty similar, right? We, it's kind of describing a period of time. Um, you're describing that it started in the past and you are still friends today, okay? So, 
Um, let's back up just a little bit. If you guys remember how we form this, this form, the present perfect. Remember, I like, I like to use my formulas, okay? So my formula for this would be subject plus the form of has or have plus, so we've got subject, the form of have or has, and then what is this called? Do you guys remember what that form of the word is called? It's called the participle, okay? And we did this in a bunch of classes. So if you've missed what, if you have a question about what are the participles, what is a participle, you need to go back into the classes from May and look for the work that we did on the participles. So when we were looking at irregular past tense, we talked also about the participles, okay? So a participle sometimes looks just like the past tense with the ED form, but a lot of the times it looks like this, where these are both, they're both irregular forms. So you really do have to practice the participles, okay? So this is your participle here, known, and been, okay? So when we did the work with participles, you guys, we looked at, it looked like this. It was like verb, um, actually, I'm gonna do that off here, past tense, and then participle. <clears throat> and you can actually just Google this, because this is, you could pull up, uh, a lot of the things that I've done for many of my students would be just as simple as saying, what are the 30 most common verbs in English? And then just really study those, okay? And so let's say, um, you know, we have um, come, uh, go, and say. Okay, let's just use those three for an example, okay? Um, the past tense of come is came. Um, the past tense of go is went. Okay, and the past tense of say is said. Okay, so then when we look at the participle for the pa the participle for come is come. Um, go is we have gone, and they say they have said said. Okay, so as you can see, sometimes it's the same as the past tense. These are all irregular. Irregular, irregular, irregular. Sorry, it's raining here today, and so it's lightning and thundering outside, which is kind of beautiful, but kind of hard when you're making videos. Okay, so we understand what we're doing here. Um, so for we've got just some examples of the verb, the past tense, and then the participle. So again, you can review those, and maybe just in the end of this class, I'll give you that list again so you don't have to go searching through videos for that. Um, okay, great. So we know we have the formula, how we form it. We have examples of the participles. And then we have kind of the rules about for and since. Actually, no, we don't have that part yet. So let's talk about that. What are the rules? How do we know, how do we know when to use for or since, okay? So there is a rule about that. Don't you love when there's rules about that? <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Um, let's keep that, let's go here. So since, okay, I'm gonna leave this part here. So this is an example. So we use for, so here we're talking about we used for, and then our, our time clause here is six years or 20 years, or we can say anything like that. Um, but what I want you to notice is that it's a period of time. So we use for is used to describe, a period of time, okay? So we're saying a period of time is six years, 20 years. You could say, I have known him for a long time. So it's not specific, 
But if I say it's a long time, it's a period of time that begins and ends, but it hasn't ended yet, okay? So we use for when we're talking about a period of time. We can use since to discuss a point in time. If you notice, both of these have like specific time periods. So I have known him since 1995. We have been friends since 2013, okay? We could also, instead of dates, you could say, I've known him since yesterday. Um, I've known him since January. I have been friends with this person for many, many years. So it can be it can be specific or it can be more general, but it's still when you say many, many years, it's a one thing. It's a pointed period of time. It's a point in time. Okay. I've known him. I've known him since, no, we wouldn't say many, many years. We would say, I've known him since, and then we have to give a point in time. Since, um, since, well, here, this is actually, this is a good example. So this is what I wanted to say, but I wanted to introduce this. So it says, since can introduce a time clause with a simple past. So I could say, I have been friends, we have been friends since I was little. It's a point in time in the past. One point in time in the past, okay? Um, I have known him since I was 30. That's one point in time. We have been friends since I was in college. We use this one a lot because many people my age, in the United States at least, went to college, right? And we meet a lot of people in college. And it, it, there's, you know, people in your all of your classes and you're there for four years. So you meet a lot of people. Um, and then you become friends with a lot of people. So, um, so, so that is how we can use since and for, and then it is, like I said, I have known him since I was 30. So this is that simple past kind of time clause. And a clause is just a part of the sentence that gives you more information. Okay. We call that a clause. Okay, um, before we sit down at the desk here, I wanted to look at one other piece of this, which is the part on contractions, okay? How do we make contractions with this? How do we make contractions with the present perfect tense. Okay, so we make contractions like this. We've made these contractions before. I'm sure that you guys have done this before, especially if you guys are an advanced level student. So let's just review and then we'll discuss also the pronunciation of it. Okay, so what are the contractions? So I, we've got our pronouns, right? I, you, she, he, it, and then we and they, okay? Those are our pronouns, or in this case, we would also, they would be our subjects, okay? So when we're using the past perfect, oh, we erased part of our thing here. So we've got here, let's go back to our formula. That's subject. Remember, English is a subject, verb, object, language. Subject, verb, object. Okay, so we have our pronouns or subjects here. Next, we need has or have, okay? Actually, I'm gonna put these all over here so we can see all of them. And they, okay? So let's put the correct forms of the verb to have in with the subject. So I, you, she, he, it, they, or we and they, I, have, you have, he, she, and it has, great, um, we have, and they have. Okay, so you're using the verb to, to have in the, its present form, 
And very simply, we only change that third person just like in present tense. Okay, so I have, you have, she has, he has, it has, and we have, and then they have. Okay, great. Now let's combine those and make the contractions, okay? So how do we make these contractions? Oh, that one is not a good marker. Thankfully, I've got tons of them. I made that in garbage, by the way. <laughs> I have goes to I've. I've, you have, goes to, you've, you've, um, he, see, okay, let's just do all these, she's, he's, it's, okay, we, let's see, we've, and they've. Now, we have, um, so what's tricky about she's and he's and it's, what's tricky about that, you guys? So these contractions can be two things, one or two. It can be she is or she has, okay? Same here, he is or he has. It is or it has. But you guys probably already know that. And then, um, yes, so contractions can be tricky. And the reason, the way that you're going to know if you're referring to she is, he is, or he has, she has, is by having this part here. If there's a participle, then you're using the pat, the the present perfect, okay? So let's look at the pronunciation for these. So if you've been coming to the pronunciation and fluency class, this should be just a no-brainer for you because we're working on all of these sounds. Okay, so I've, if we use the international phonetic alphabet is I've, I've, all right, you've, how would we write that, you guys? If you haven't done the first class for pronunciation and fluency and you're struggling and you don't know what I'm talking about right now, please go back and watch those classes. Um, pronunciation and fluency is probably, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important pieces that people can do to help themselves feel comfortable speaking and learning English. And using it out in the world if you you know maybe you use english in your work or maybe you use it with your friends or your husband or your children who knows ultimately we just have to practice these sounds and the pronunciation and fluency class we just dive super deep into um especially um especially the vowels and these kinds of examples like the contractions okay Okay, so you've, let's do y, u, v, you've, okay, you've, this is the y, u, and v, she, so we make, this is the sh sound, sh, e's, with a z sound at the end, she's, she's, okay, he's, e's, Okay, and it's, it's is not eats. Okay, it's not eats. E, I, E, I. This is I, it's, it's, it's. And this one has an S sound. Now you're probably like, well, that doesn't make sense. The other two sounds are Z sounds. Watch the pronunciation and fluency class and you will understand why that is, okay? All right, let's just go here so we've got a little more space. Weave, wuh, e, v, weave, and the, they, they, they. Now you're like, what in the world is that? What is that? 
So that remember in English, we've got two TH. So there's two TH sounds. One is like this and one is like this. So this one has no vibration. Number one has no vibration. Thank you. Think. Versus number two, this. This, it has vibration. It's a different sound. So think, no vibration. I'm going to just go like that. And this or that. This one has vibration. Okay? This. I know there's so much to learn. Okay, so we've got the we know our we've got our formula here. Okay, we've got our contractions. Now we know how to properly pronounce them. Let's go over here and we're gonna look together at some of the exercises together. Okay. And let's see, pull you guys over here. Common irregular verbs and an alphabetical reference list. Close, we can get close. So what we see here, you guys, we have um, the simple, sorry, I need to move this over so I can see you guys. We have common irregular verbs. So we've got the simple form, the simple past, and then the participle. So this is the one we will use in present perfect. Okay, awake, be, beat, become, begin, you guys get the picture. Okay, so there's the top part of it, and then I scoot down, and you can see the rest of it there. Okay, I will make a copy of this, and I will post this in our app on grammar stuff, okay? All right, let's sit down here together and switch this over. Again, we're looking at this lovely book, which I just love so much. We are looking at... Um, very simple kind of work here. So let's do this part right here. Okay. So if we're practicing using since and for, I have to move you guys over because I cannot see that unless it's right there. Okay. So looking at the grammar, um, complete the sentences with since in four. So Amy has been here for two months since September. Okay, let's do the rest of them here. For or since yesterday. For yesterday, since yesterday. I don't want to write too much in my book and I should have made a copy. So you guys get the picture. I'm going to just write really lightly. So since. Okay. Um, Amy has been here. Remember, for is for um, a period of time, and since is a point in time. For, period, since. For, since. For, since. <laughs> okay, so Amy has been here since the term started. Amy has been here for a couple of hours, okay? And Amy has been here for 15 minutes. Um, Mrs. Ellis has worked as a substitute teacher since school began, since last year, since, these are all points in time, right? This is one school began in one point of time. Last year is one point of time. Miss Ellis has worked as a substitute teacher for about a year. That's a period of time. Since September, that's a point in time, for a long time. Okay. The Smiths have been married for two years. Since last May, for five days, for a long time. Okay. I've known about Sonia's engagement for almost four months. Since the beginning of the year, since the 1st of January, and since yesterday. Okay, hopefully that's so easy for you guys. Um, okay, we are going to stop for today. What I would like for you to do is this exercise right here, exercise six. So you're going to take these five sentences and make two additional sentences. So you're going to take the first part 
and make one with since and then make one with four. Okay, so I've been in the building since nine o'clock this morning for 27 minutes. We've been in class since noon for three hours. Okay, we'll do one more together and then four and five are for you. I've been in the city since, let's think of a period of time since October for many days. Okay, got it? Awesome. So you guys pause this and do the rest of those. And when you're done with that, this set part right here, exercise nine, I have known Mark Miller ever since we were in college. Pedro ch has changed his major three times. So they give you the verb right here, his major uh, three times since he started school. So we've got these clauses. So it says complete the sentences with the correct form of the words in parentheses and then put brackets around the since clause. So that's what they've got here, a bracket here and here. So if we do that in this sentence, Pedro has changed his major three times since he started school, okay? Please go ahead and finish three, four, five, six, and seven. And we will look at this again tomorrow in our class. Um, I think I've said this already to you guys, but please, please, please be checking our schedule so that you are familiar with the classes and the times for June and July. Um, and everybody had, let's see, um, I need to stop sharing this. Um, that's all for today. Join us tomorrow and we'll work and continue this work. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Bye.